The election might feel like it was a million years ago, but the parliament has just begun. There was pomp, there was ceremony, and of course, there was politics. So let's take a look at the first week of the 47th parliament. For a brief moment, the parliament was united with Nambri and Nullawal man Paul House graciously welcoming the politicians. Yinjamara, Yinjamal Gijo, respect, be gentle, be polite, be patient, give honour, take responsibility. The welcome to country and smoking ceremony is a relatively new tradition when opening the Australian Parliament, and it was particularly emotional for the 47th, with a record number of First Nations parliamentarians having been elected. My colleague, Mike Bowers, took this photo capturing the historic moment. The new Prime Minister, Anthony Albanese, became emotional during his speech ahead of the official opening when referencing the potential to introduce an Indigenous voice to Parliament. And when you're sitting on the porch, thinking about what you did, you can either have a source of pride or a source of regret. Make it a source of pride. Anthony Albanese has made big promises to change the tone of politics under his leadership, but that didn't stop the digs during question time. I wish him well as leader of the opposition. I hope he stays there for a very, very long time. <laughs> the new colourful crossbench independents were popping up everywhere, as were the Greens, and this parliament, you'll be hearing a lot more from all of them, with a change to the standing orders allowing the crossbench more questions during QT. But the week belonged to the newly elected and the most diverse parliament in Australia's history showed why representation matters. As I look around the house today, it feels like finally it is starting to live up to its name. A house made up of people who truly reflect and represent the communities in which they live. But I spent years hiding myself because I could not see anyone in my world who was openly gay. This is so much harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> Though there was one notable person missing from the House of Reps, the former Prime Minister Scott Morrison. It was revealed he had skipped the first sitting week of Parliament to speak at a Conservatives Leaders' Summit in Tokyo. We still don't know if he's being paid for that. In terms of policy, the opening week was dominated by two major issues, the climate crisis and the economy. The consumer price index rose to 6.1%, the largest in more than two decades. These are confronting numbers. Treasurer Jim Chalmers laid the groundwork for the hard times to come. It will get tougher uh, before it starts to ease. Inflation is predicted to hit 7.75% before the end of the year. And that means the October budget will be a tough one. One of the most urgent and pressing issues of our time climate change. And Labor introduced the first of its climate legislation bills, including one which will legislate a 43% emissions reduction target. It needs the green support in the Senate to get it through though, and Adam Band's party wants to see no new coal or gas projects included, but Labor won't budge on that. The coalition won't budge at all, refusing to even come to the table to negotiate. Although some moderates, like Bridget Archer in the House and Andrew Bragg in the Senate, have not ruled out crossing the floor. Yeah, I do think it is time to put the climate wars um, aside. Labor also moved legislation to abolish the ABCC, which was a particular focus to the coalition during question time, despite the major economic headwinds dominating most people's minds. I refer to the triple CFMEU, the corrupt and criminal construction union, and a significant donor and a very successful donor to the Prime Minister's party. The government also moved to scrap the cashless debit card, but the era of income management isn't over. The basics card in the Northern Territory remains. In better news, bills to improve aged care and provide for 10 days paid family and domestic violence leave were also introduced. There's still a week to go, but the parliament is motoring along. Expect more of the same as everyone settles into their new roles, especially the new speaker, Milton Dick, who at least seems to be having a little bit of fun. The member for Morton has been continuing interjecting. He will leave the chamber under 94A. I'll call the... I'll... He may be my neighbour, but he's having a holiday. I give the call to the manager.